showrunners out there. You need John Vargas. Thank you. See you later. Were there any jobs that you booked that you felt like you were in a master class? Yeah, yeah. For me, it was a great honor to work. I, I, I worked on a movie called Primary Colors. Mm. Um, and With Mike Nichols. And Mike Nichols directed yes. it, yeah. He, th that was, I mean, the experience of that from beginning to end was surreal. And your work in that was... Superb. Oh, thank you. It was thank you. superb. I, uh, if you haven't seen Primary Colors, you really need to go look for it. Yeah. I, I played a patient with AIDS and uh, um, who's dying, who's in a, in a kind of a, a hospice. hospice mm -hmm. Right. And when I got the audition, I was, I was panicking because, I, you know, I was, you know, I looked in, in the mirror one and I went, wow, this is, I'm too healthy. So... I went to a bar the night before, and I took my, my I, it was a monologue, so it was, about, it was about like this big on the page. So I took the page with me, and I, you know, sat there smoking, because um, I don't drink, but I, I, I thought if I stayed up really late, I'd look ragged the next day. And, and they, the audition was on a Saturday. Mm, which is rare. Yeah, like very days. rare. Yes, sir. And, and so it was at Universal. I had my coffee. I sat out on my balcony and I'm, you know, reading my, uh, my script. And so I got, I got ready and I took off and I get there. And, and of course it was in the, it was in the tower and you drive into the, into the structure and there was no cars, you know? And the only car that I saw was this stretch limo. And I go, oh, Mike Nichols. And I was like, I, w I, I got nervous. So I went in when they finally, uh, uh, Jewel Bestrup was the casting director. And um, she said, okay, John, we're ready for you. So I walk in and of course I became a little puddle. Oh, Mr. Nichols, I'm sorry, <laughs> my God, oh. You know, and then Jewel was like, okay, we can start now. And I, oh, I'm sorry. So I took a second and um, then I do the scene. And as seen as my last line, uh, Jewel grabbed my hand. She said, okay, thank you very much. And she ushered me out the door. And I went, uh, I didn't even get a chance to say thank you. Or, I got in my car. And of course, you know, actors, we tend to want to have our best auditions in the car. You know? And, and <laughs> after, after the fact. Why could I have done you know, this? You know? And, and uh, why didn't I do this? And me, it was one of the things that I said to myself is don't rush it. Play the moments. Play the moments. And I'm and, and everything that I was saying on the way home, I rushed it. I rushed it. I rushed it. So I get home. My coffee was still rather warm. And I'm sitting there and I'm just beating myself up. And the phone rings. It's Jewel Bestrom. And she goes, John, I really apologize for calling you at home. Because, you know, casting directors right. don't do that. Right. She goes, but because it's Saturday... I can't get a hold of your agent. And so I just wanted to let you know that tell him that, you know, uh, that I'll be calling him on Monday. And I call, and she goes, and the other reason that I wanted to um, uh, talk to you is I wanted to let you know that I took you out of the room because Mr. Nichols was crying. And I didn't want him mm. to get embarrassed if you looked up and saw mm. that. And I went, oh my God. I go, that's a good thing? And she goes, yeah, it ain't a bad thing. <laughs> and so, he got, I got goosebumps. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was just, and that's what started it. And of course, uh, other things happen because Mr. Nichols, what he does is when he started to do a film, he'd have a, a full cast reading at his apartment in New York prior. You know, not before the... It was for him to hear it. Mm -hmm. And he had a tendency to offer roles. And he had offered this role to another actor in New York. And the thing was, he basically said, give me a week so I can work this out. And, and of course, I told my agent, that's never going to happen. You know, if they offer them the role, they're going to do it. So, but, you know, I get the call because I had said to him, it's not in my, uh, it's, it's not in my experience. 
And then my agent called me back like a week later and goes, it's in your experience now. So the masterclass thing, um, it is a heady place to be on a, a, a lighting break and you're off to the side and you discover you're having a conversation or you're trying to interject into the conversation when you have Elaine May, Mike Nichols, Emma Thompson, Kathy Bates, and Billy Bob Thornton. Wow. And the thought that hit mm. me was, they're all Oscar winners. Wow. They're, this is, I'm out of my league, you know. This is, <laughs> so I listened. I listened to everything. The one person that I didn't speak with throughout the entire uh, shoot, and I mean, I was invited to the set a lot because I only had one scene, so I, I, I went and visited a lot, was John Travolta, never said a word to me. And so on the night of the premiere, I'm walking with my date, we're walking the, the red carpet, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, my, I'm like, hey, my date is, and the, you know, the uh, the groups of uh, photographers and, and, uh, and uh, reporters and stuff like that and uh so i get to the door and just as i'm getting to the door i see someone coming at me like really fast and when i look up it's john travolta and he goes uh have you seen this and i go no get ready get ready and i, I you know and i was like i didn't know what i hadn't i hadn't had two words with him and all of a sudden he's you know, uh, uh, initiating conversation. So I said, okay, okay. The movie has a rhythm mm -hmm. that gets established with humor mm -hmm. and everything. Else. And you're sitting in the audience with everybody, a who's who of Hollywood hierarchy. And of course, you know, even though I'd been in this business a long time, I, I felt like the new kid. My scene comes up and it gets eerily quiet. I'm like, Mm. Oh, no. You know, it was like danger, Will Robinson. What that scene does at that moment is it changes the trajectory of the movie completely. And afterwards, one of the first people to come up to me, came up to me, was uh, Robert Duvall. Wow. And that was like, that made me, you know, I just floated for the rest of the mm. night. That's so. awesome. So now, it was like a big master class for me. That's beautiful. As an actor, we're working and trying to do and, and be, but you had another skill set that you brought to the table um, before you were acting, which was Three photography. Three-card Monty. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and photography. How did that start to help you as an actor, or did it? I had a camera in my hands from the age of 14. I got it for my birthday, and a week later, I was still trying to figure out the camera. It was a 35 millimeter Nikon, and um, I went to a concert. And somehow, I talked myself onto the stage with Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I had, I had amazing pictures. Um, so it was something that I'd always done, and but once I got into uh, acting school, I kind of you know, put it down. As any parent would know, you need to be a photographer when you have a child. So I started shooting. And people started saying, wow, you take great pictures. And then I said, yeah. And then somebody said, you should do this for money. And I basically, what I did was I kind of stepped back from my acting. I mean, I had been working pretty solid. Mm -hmm. pretty solid. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to stay, I'm going to be a stay-at-home dad with my son and raise and and so that he has a good foundation what a beautiful and that's, that's very admirable and so i bit the bullet and i kind of pulled away and and i was out in suburbia so you know nobody needed to know who i was and i didn't really care then uh i started shooting i mean i was shooting things uh commercial shots you know i started buying more equipment and i kind of settled into uh, i did fashion and then I started shooting actors. I saw the work you did on Diana Ortelli, which I thought was so beautiful. Yeah, it was fun stuff. And I and and what it did for me was not so much what the acting brought into it, or it was the creative process. And then what happened? It morphed. You know, I would hire a crew, so I had assistants and I had lighting guys and I had makeup, and and that just kind of went into because I had time. 
I, I went back to school and I started studying film direction. Wow. And a screenwriting. So um, in, in my screenwriting class, they wanted us to write a screenplay. And of course, I couldn't stop it just that because I, you know, I said, I'm going to shoot it. So I was the director. So there's a sense of collaboration and community. And when you're the general, you know, and you see it happen, it fulfills me. Then I realized that this is going to take a lot more. I, I, but somebody said, you know what, you should, you should go back into acting. And I thought, you know, it's like dog years. And I was out for like seven years and that's like, you know, 35, you know. Um, so I, my agent at the time when I was doing all the work had dissolved. They were no longer around. <laughs> they got gobbled up. Well, they, yeah, something like that. They got, uh, so, so, I, you know, I had to look for an agent. But what I had learned in the business is, you know, I know that actors, some actors, they want to have a, an, an agent that's in Beverly Hills. That is, you know, if you have an agent that's in, you know, Valley Village or, you know, Studio City. That doesn't count. Yeah. Yes. But. Which is the, a lie. The fact of the matter yeah. is, if you have representation, you have representation. Right. So, I went with this. One agent, you know, office, uh, who I you know, didn't really care because they weren't flattering to me. You know, I, I showed him my headshots, and, and, and the first thing she said was, why are you wearing a T-shirt? You look like an old man trying to be young. And then I looked at her, and she had cowboy boots and a mini skirt, and her hair was dyed. And so I went, okay. And, but she called me one day, and she goes, I went and had lunch with a manager who wanted to see my uh, my roster. As the manager was looking down the list, she went, oh, "You have John Vargas? I don't need to see any more. That's who I want to see. I want to I have him come to my office." And of course, Susan Susan Ferris, who had been with a, with a, the same management firm I had been with them briefly years ago, but I left on good terms. You know, I said, listen, I think this is not going to work, and let's, you know, shake hands and be on our way. What would you like to accomplish in the next five years as an actor or as a photographer or as a director? Creatively, what would you like to accomplish? I'm not done acting. Good. And so, you know, my obstacle is my, um, we're all narcissists. I'm still trying to negotiate my age with you know, what in here, what mm -hmm. I feel like, right, you know, right. um, but branding yourself. Exactly. Yes. So, um, and the thing is that I've always fallen through, you know, the cracks or at the, Oh, you're, you're too old for this, but I, yeah, but I'm that age oh, yeah. or you're too young, you know, but I'm that age, you know, mm -hmm. what I would love to be is the, the captain in a police procedural, you know, and I see it. As you were as you were talking, I was like, first of all, I was I, I'm looking at you this whole time, going, he looks so rich, <laughs> and it, I mean, no, but that's the character, you know. It's a it's it's a, a wealthy person. It's somebody who's got power, who who's got the experience, who mandates and uh, sends everybody out. So when you said that, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see you, I, I, the, I, absolutely. The FBI. Shonda Rhimes. <laughs> Uh, we need him on a series. Thank you. Uh, and there's other aspects to that, and, and you would know uh, uh, about if you have that kind of a role, you're not there every day. You're right. not driving the show. You're, right. you're, it's not on your shoulders. Right. So you show up, you get, you're in a good mood, you get well paid, and you go home. Yes. You know? so, uh, but I would like to do that. What, and then in that, then all of that other stuff branches out because... I would I would want to direct within that. Excellent. And then continue that way. Excellent. Um, as far as my photography, I just picked up my cameras. There was not a day that I would not leave the house without my camera bag because I would be taking pictures, you know, whatever. I'd stop and yeah, I kind of lost the mojo. And then I understood and I said, okay. But now I've come back to it. You know, I've got my cameras and I shoot, I'm not just Di digitally, I have a Hasselblad, you know, uh, medium format camera that I use. 
uh, and I love shooting wow. on film. And it's because it's a challenge. You don't yes. see you don't see your result right yes. away. There's a right. instantaneous right. Uh, gratification right. Right. to it. Uh, you have to you know have the film develop and go. Oh, fuck. If I had only, and you learn from that. So. Yes. What is so great about where you are now in your life is that you can play these incredible, powerful um, bosses. Mm. You know that you have that that season, that, that experience in you to go and take the mountain. <laughs> you know, you can take it, John. Someone once said I went up for something and, and, and I was uh, slightly underage. And what they basically said was, I need more weight, more weight. And I kept, you know, and he goes, no, no, it's, there's gravitas. And that's that what you, you have. Yeah. Oh, thank that's you. That's what you have right now. It's, it, it's you are so seasoned and so, you know, you've lived life. Oh, yeah. And you can, and, and, but, but as actors, we can only do as much as we've lived. Exactly. You know, yeah. and so we only get better as we get older. The beautiful thing about acting is that it's there forever. You, you, it's not something that you age out of. I know. I mean, look at uh, Sam Elliott. I love Oh, Sam. my God. I love Sam. I worked with him twice. He is the is, nicest he man. Is, isn't he? One of my favorite people in the world. Yeah, so I, I actually want to talk about this, uh, about I think you should do a campaign to uh, top showrunners and, and just pitch the idea of being the captain. Because I think you have not only a shot, but I think you'll get a lot of bites. Mm. The, the beauty of, of come nibble. Yeah, the beauty of <laughs> the beauty of acting is that we create characters, right? I'm a big believer that um, don't wait for the audition to come, but but Be you know proactive. knock knock yeah. on the showrunner's door and say, hey, I love this show. I think I could, you know, be a great asset to this show, and I would love to play the captain. But to to look at those shows and maybe pick five to seven that you you know you could just bring something fantastic to it and just pitch mm. just a little you know two liners yeah. here's my resume i've done this and this and this i would i love your writing cuz that's where that's, it starts that's where it is yeah. you know and if you love the writing and you as an actor can deliver why not share that with them yeah. That's what this Puerto Rican thinks, okay? <laughs> That's how we roll up in here when Carmen says mamita. So it, it was so important for me to get you to come here and I'm speak. I'm so glad you did. Because um, you came out about the same time as I did from New York. You, you mm. came from school and I came from New York. And so to, to track your your career and see how you've grown and see you know I love that I love to see how people have developed and just kind of branched out and um and I had lost track of what you were doing until I saw the shots that you took of Deanna and then I was like oh my god John Vargas did that oh my god I gotta, gotta find John and I woke up recently I was like I need John Vargas I need John Vargas. That was that was that was in my prayer. It was like I need John Vargas. Oh. So I, I reached out to you Richard. Found, you I was found like, me. Richard, I need John Vargas. Where's John Vargas? <laughs> so it, it's just thank you, thank you so much thank because um, it, it's just lovely to see how our community grows, how how the people in our community. Um, establish themselves and do great things. And mm. so you're doing amazing stuff and people need to know about it. And uh, you showrunners out there, <laughs> you need John Vargas. Thank you. <laughs> and if you think I'm kidding, go check out Primary Colors. Go and look at that because that is a work of art. I mean, as an actor, you salivate to do something like that. It's like, oh my God, he did that. Oh, it was so beautiful. Thank you. I, I, your work is beautiful. I saw, I saw a SWAT and stuff. But that was just gold, you know. Thank you. And to be able, you know, we want to be able to do that as actors all the time. So, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. That's all I have for you today. Check out the next video coming up.